Bhutan, possibly the worst starting nation in Hearts of Iron 4. Now, on paper, there are other nations who have less manpower, there are nations with less factories, there are nations where you quite literally cannot deploy any divisions. But Bhutan is terrible in its own unique way. First of all, it's landlocked. No, no, no. It's double. No, it's triple landlocked. Now, somehow, Paradox managed to make it even worse in the last update, because in By Blood alone, Paradox introduced a system where you cannot join factions if you are too far away from it, which means that Bhutan, being in the middle of nowhere, literally cannot join factions. But today, I believe that I have cracked the code for Bhutan. So, for the first time, I believe, in Hearts of Iron 4 history, I bring you Bhutan World Conquest. Alright, just before we start, given what we're gonna do in this video, I think you can probably imagine that this video took an insane amount of time to test, test runs, and then finally do the final run and editing. So, it would mean so much if you could drop a like, subscribe, comment, and turn the notifications on. Right. Let's begin the Bhutanese torture. Single player, new game, 1936, other countries, and we're going all the way to this hellhole in Bhutan, bordering only two countries, one of which is part of the biggest empire on earth. How will we conquer the entire world as this tiny country? Stay tuned to find out. Let us begin. So, Research, we're immediately gonna go and get the better guns. If you watched the China video, you know I absolutely hate these terrible World War One guns. Uh, can we just talk about how it's 1939, World War Two is about to happen in Europe, and China is here fighting Japan with <laughs> with World War One guns. <laughs> so let's get better ones immediately, and also gonna get a better research speed, um, factories. I'm not going to be building factories because, you know, we only have two civilian factories. What I am going to be building is a bit of an airbase, and after that, I'm just going to build some forts. Level 2 forts on the two tiles that we have is going to be enough, and let's also go and grab political effort. Don't worry, Mr. Jingmei Wang Chuck, I will make you proud. Oh, wait, did I say make Mr. Jingbei Wangchuk proud? Oh, uh, I actually meant I'm gonna overthrow you in a communist revolution. <laughs> Let's make sure to go over here and grab internationalism focus, which gives us extra communist support, which uh, means that we can overthrow Mr. Wangchuk. Uh, Sorry that we can't keep you, Mr. Wangchuk. Your your name is enough to conquer the world on its own. Speaking of conquering the world, our better guns are finished researching. Let's immediately go and swap those out. I have a literal phobia for those World War One guns. Thank you, China. Right, as soon as we have 20 command power, I'm going to go over here and grab the short army maneuver expert will do. We need that taking army XP. Given the sorry state of our army, zero divisions, <laughs> uh, army XP is going to come at a premium, and we need some army XP to edit our templates, maybe also grab a few doctrines, so I'm just going to do that as soon as I can. All right, well, internationalism focus is completed. We now have quite a huge amount of ticking communist support, which means that we can uh, leave this branch for now, and we're going to go over here grab a little bit more industry, because our three factories, they're not gonna do anything for us. Right, industrial effort done, let's go and grab another military factory. Our current production is in a pitiful state. Also, let's grab dispersed industry, because we will be uh, starting a lot of new production lines later on, when we have more factories, so I think the efficiency base is going to come in pretty useful. While our forts are finished building, our civilian factory is just literally going to go away to trade for now. And we also have extra research speed. Let's hop over and grab a paratroopers. That's right, we're doing paratrooper cheeses. As a tiny little nation stuck between two stronger nations, what other option do we have? And of course, since we're going to be using trap paratroopers, any new factories we get are going to go on the transport planes, and I'm also going to see if we can, uh, instead of trading for steel, because guns aren't really the most important right now, I'm just going to trade for some aluminium from Hungary, maximize our transport plane production, probably going to get two, one or two more factories on transport planes, just so we make enough, because remember, 
after by blood alone you now need 50 transport planes to power drop not just one so uh yeah the Bhutanese industry is gonna be uh uh, on top form, trying to produce enough transport planes for the Bhutanese Air Force. Dispersed 1 finished, let's immediately go and grab Dispersed 2, so our factories are making as many transport planes as possible right now, they're making 1 per month. Well done, Bhutan! Alright, with our communist support above 40%, we can go over here, click this, uh, discredit government. Mr. Wang Chuck, your government sucks, and suddenly everyone lo loves communism a lot more. Hold a national referendum, and we are now the Union of Red Dragons. Immediately go over here and put up Mr. Karl Marx's picture so he can start printing us some more manpower. Because right now we have 6,000 manpower. We are not doing anything with 6,000 manpower. Mr. Marx, print out some more Bhutanese people for me, please. And in the meantime, I'm probably going to justify on Tibet at some point. I'm just going to wait a little bit so we have time to actually get some troops out because, again... Zero division Bhutanese army. Right, with armament effort 2 finished, instead of going down industry, I'm actually going to return to the political branch and get a few of these focuses. You will see why in a bit. I have a very, very good reason for doing so. And since we are now communist, we have absolutely no use of Mr. Gen Gendun Choffel. <laughs> uh, you can go and we're going to replace you with the exact opposite of communism, Mr. Trim on Mr. Trim on Topple. You, apparently they're brothers or something. Well, Mr. Demagogue, why are we doing this? Are we going to be flipping ideologies twice? Yes, indeed we are. That might be uh, seem like a weird choice, but everything will come together later, I promise. Right, our paratroopers are researched, and with the army XP that we have been hoarding, let's go and create our one meme, uh, one battalion paratrooper division. Here we go, we have a paratrooper template. And I'm going to train around uh, 10 of these. This should be enough to deal with Tibet. Uh, right now they have like 3 divisions. That's still literally infinity times more than our 0. So uh, we definitely just get training a bit. We're also going to want to train around 6 of these infantry divisions. Now don't get too excited. <laughs> literally 4 combat with 12 soft attack. This is uh, once again giving me PTSD from 1939 China. Oh my goodness, Bhutan, I did not think anyone could be as bad as China, but apparently you are. Alright, well, let's go and hop over here and get radio, get a few buffs for our non-existent army. But we are training these divisions, let's just hope they can we can get them out before our war goal with, the, with us. Tibet finishes. Let's also go ahead and get political commissars, which actually gives us a nice recovery buff, nice. And with Japan also declaring war on China, our war support is finally 10%. <laughs> Apparently, Bhutan is a pacifist country, but we're still going to conquer the world, don't you worry. But with 10% war support, we can actually, limited conscription, get 1% more Bhutanese people in the army. Because we are sat here with zero manpower. Mr. Karl Marx, the manpower printer, just cannot keep up, apparently. In the meantime, I'm also going to open up political discourse and start expanding civil support because as soon as we take Tibet and we have more than one state I am immediately going to civil war and switch ideologies once again Mr. Gendun Rinpoche or whatever <laughs> you're getting fired very soon you're fired you're fired you're fired Mr. Gendun Rinpoche you're fired Political Commissars is completed. Let's jump back over here and maybe get a little bit more industry, hopefully, because we still have 11 transport planes to produce. Our production speed has gone up quite a bit, so we should be alright. I'm also going to start researching artillery, because even though we're not producing them right now, uh, just pave the way for the future Bhutanese Empire. Right, we do now have enough transport planes. 55 is more than enough. Let's go and delete this production line. Gonna put it all on infantry for now, but we are going to start an artillery production line as soon as we can. We also don't have any factories to trade for steel. Uh, the Bhutanese economy is in shambles. Right, the justification on Tibet has been completed. Right, first of all, I'm immediately gonna go over here and justify on Romania. Now, that might seem like an extremely weird choice, but you will see, you will see. Now, back to Tibet. 
right now, let's take a look at their intel. They have 7 to 13 divisions. That's Paradox's way of saying they have 10 divisions. Thank you, Paradox. Um, I can see 7 of them over here. They usually have divisions on their capital, annoyingly, and also sometimes one over here. The game plan is going to be to drop over here to lure these divisions out, and we just need to count their divisions. No, they have 10 divisions. If we can see 10 divisions physically on the map, then we know that there is nothing on their capital, and that is when we strike. And the Bhutanese paratroopers storm the Sibetan capital. That's going to be our strategy. I'm just going to drop on these four points for now. Going to declare war as well. These uh, six infantry divisions, however terrible, should be able to hold. We do have forts and mountains, so it should not be that big of a deal. Right, there we go. Our paratroopers have landed. Uh, again, they have 7 to 13 divisions, so uh, basically 10. Uh, I'm going to just keep power dropping and probing around Tibet. Again, importantly, we need to count divisions. If we can count 10 divisions, then we are good to go dropping on their capital. If we don't count 10, it is completely pointless. All right, well, apparently their intel has updated, and it now says 4 to 10 divisions, which I'm assuming that means they have 7. Now, I can currently see 8 divisions. Which means that there is a more than likely chance that their capital is currently empty. So I think I'm good to go to drop on their capital. And there we go. Easy peasy Tibet squeezy. Tibet and we're going to annex Tibet for now. Boom. The most important thing, you just have to count their divisions. Right, we currently have 56% stability. Which basically means that as soon as I... Go over here and click anti-fascist raids, which gives minus 10% stability. I'm going to be able to click here and ignite the civil war. Yes, we are changing ideologies once again. Now, you might be wondering why we are justifying on Romania. Well, Romania has the coveted French guarantee, which means that we're going to try, and get a, uh, try to attack France now. We are stuck in the middle of nowhere. Sure, we have taken Tibet, but we still have no way to attack France. And indeed, Tibet is so damn far away from anybody that even if we change ideology, there is a massive minus 83%, uh, minus 83, you see that there, uh, which prevents us from joining the Axis. Well, you see, we are currently landlocked, but because we changed the communist, the Soviets and the, the Sinkangians, oh, <laughs> they are very happy to give us military access. And boom, suddenly we have access to the Soviet port in Leningrad. Right, because we are planning to do a civil war, I'm just going to train up the usual one infantry division and uh, not set a location yet. And we're basically going to wait until this division is ready for deployment. In the meantime, I'm going to improve relations with Germany and also with Italy. Then we're going to go and click anti-fascist raids. That drops our stability by 10. And that is enough. To ignite the civil war, we are no longer Union of Red Dragons. We are now the Thunder Dragon Empire. And let's go ahead and drop down our one division and do the usual, just walking around their country. They don't even have any victory points, so we're just taking random tiles. And because earlier we improved relations with Germany and Italy, they are now very happy to send us a few of their precious convoys. Boom, there we go. 30 from both of those guys. Thank you guys very much. Alright, well, uh, I still have not told you guys how I plan to get to Europe. Well, PDX might have made it so that I cannot join the Axis, because as you can see, despite being the same ideology, we are too damn far that Mr. A.D. Schmittler just does not like us enough. But, we can't join factions, but PDX forgot that I can still create factions and as soon as ideological fanaticism finishes <laughs> we can create a faction with italy all right let's name ourselves the rome bhutan axis <laughs> just to piss germany off there we go the dawn of the rome bhutan axis oh this is actually ridiculous <laughs> we're in a faction with italy it's bhutan all right that was not even the most broken part, can you believe it? Because if I take our one division, give you guys an army, and draw a front line uh, here, we now have a front line order, and because we are in Italy's faction, and they are technically still at war with Ethiopia's government in exile, if I accept their call to arms, 
we are now also technically at war with uh, the Ethiopia government in exile, which means that we are now in the same war as Italy. And you know what that means, right? Expeditionaries. Italy right now has 83 divisions. You know what, Italy? Can I just have... Can I have a few of them? <laughs> this is so stupid. I just took literally all of the Italian army. Oh, this is, as I've said, beyond broken, right? The, <laughs> we have 80 divisions. <laughs> we look in here. Italy has three divisions and Bhutan has 81 divisions. This, uh, this is beyond broken. Right, let's not get too ahead of ourselves here because... Uh, we gotta remember, what Italy sent us is something called the Italian Army, which in English translates to useless piece of trash. Uh, but there are some divisions in here that are good. For example, we have 19 of these Infantry Template 3, very creative uh, name there, Mr. Tortellini. And these guys are uh, actually the old 7-2 division. Now, I know what you're thinking. These, the, this, this meta is literally older than Joe Biden's existence. <laughs> but hey, we are Bhutan. Beggars can't be choosers. These are gonna be pretty damn good. We also have some of these in, uh, what are they called? Inf Divisioni di the Infantry. Well, well, I can't pronounce it, alright? It's not great, it's uh, six infantry battalions, but it does have support artillery, so those are going to be pretty great as well. We have these division coloniales, they are literal trash, so I'm just going to separate the absolute garbage into an army. We also have some militia, which is not bad, so I'm just going to put that with the infantry divisions. Mountaineers, also not bad, those can go with the infantry divisions as well. There we go. And... I'm just gonna go and sort out the Italian army because, oh my god, this is such a mess. This is one of the most annoying things of By Blood Alone. Italy has literally more division templates than failures in my life, and I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> Alright, well, the Italian army is pretty much sorted out. We have three armies here, which are pretty damn decent, and we're gonna slap those guys on the French border. Uh, we have 28 of these uh, pretty damn terrible, useless colonial divisions. I'm just going to set a fallback line on this port here, right next to Rome. And over here, our one division is still trying to slowly but surely finish our civil war. Also, we did ideological fanaticism, so we can go over here and... I'm actually going to go and do research sharing, because remember, we are technically at war with Ethiopia. That's give us, that gives us a free research slot, which is pretty huge for Ethiopia. Right now, we don't have comp. We're still waiting for the lend lease, um, so we can move these Italian troops around. And I'm also going to retrain our 10 paratroopers. You know what, I'm going to train 12 of these paratroopers, just to be safe. Right, we have this trashy army of 28. Now, what I'm going to do is split off half of these guys, and I'm actually going to send them over to the Soviet ports in Leningrad. Remember, we asked the military access from Soviets and Xinjiang, and the AI actually never revokes your access, so you pretty much keep it forever. And we're going to send half of these over to um, Leningrad. The reason being is that when we do declare war on the Allies, we have a front here with the British Raj. <laughs> and we could, yes, we are, of course, going to force the Italians to guard that front for us. What isn't Italy doing for us at this point? Literally, I do not know. <laughs> now that we no longer need multiple states so we can do a civil war, let's go ahead and release Tibet because we're currently using 23,000 precious Bhutanese <laughs> troops to garrison Tibet, and I do not have time for that. So let's just release Tibet as a puppet. Uh, and what I'm also going to do is deploy, force deploy these uh, paratroopers, and we're going to add you to a new army and railroad guys over to Leningrad. Also, I'm going to train one infantry division because you need one division to be able to request expeditionaries. And as Italy trains more divisions, I, I want to yoink every single last one of them. So <laughs> we might as well do that with our one division. Right, the Italian trash has arrived in Leningrad. Let's get you guys a frontline set up here in Tibet with the border with the British Raj. These divisions are like like actual garbage, like 1939 China garbage. <laughs> uh, but they should be able to hold Bhutan again. We have forts and mountains. Uh, they should be able to do it, all right? And these remaining crappy divisions that we have in Italy, I'm just going to park them on Genoa. And uh, if there's ever a need to plug 
holes in the line with just fodder, then we could use them. But otherwise, I don't see these divisions being useful at all because they are quite literally Italian garbage. What's this, Italy? You have 12 divisions? Oh, alright, well, you know what? I actually I actually fancy yoinking, like, just, just, just like, all of them. So, uh, we, we have ourselves here 10 extra divisions. Now, we have five more of these really good divisions. That's amazing. It's honestly up to Italy what army we get, so... <laughs> I'm pretty happy with these divisions we have here. We have three more of these decent infantry divisions, and two more of these just, just pieces of trash, I guess, so... I'll put them in this army. Also, our paratroopers have arrived in Leningrad. Let's go and ship you guys off all to Italy as well. And also, uh, can't forget to deploy our transport planes. And also fly them over to this airport here near Turin. Prepare for the paradrop of France. Well, what do you know? The Italian colonial <laughs> troops. These troops are literally colonial divisions that are guarding that were meant to be guarding Ethiopia and Somalia. I wonder how you guys find the Bhutanese uh, the Bhutanese environment here. We're smack down in the middle of the Himalayas. Uh, but you guys will be guarding the Bhutanese home soil. Right, well, uh, I might as well also exercise these divisions because they are currently green, but pretty close to being level 2. So I want them at least not to be green. That should help us in combat with the allies later on. We are only like 10 days, or oh, not even, a week away from war with um, with France. So let's railroad these paratroopers over to this airport over here. And the plan is literally just gonna be to paradrop France's victory points. At this point, they have disjointed government. So I'm pretty sure all you need is Paris, which is worth 50. And I think it's 20 or 30 more victory points. Now, Orléans is worth 15, and let's just go and drop on a bunch of other victory points. Lille is 10, Tours is 10, Lyon is 10, I'm pretty sure, and everything else is pretty much 5. So let's just go and drop on a bunch of French victory points. We don't even need to succeed on all of these, just like around half of them, as well as Paris, and France should be an easy capitulation for us. The main worry is still going to be the British. So, it is time for the war against the Allies. Bhutan declares war on Romania, and boom, France is in. And immediately, Paradrop France, oh, it's all succeeding. Oh, <laughs> Romania joins the Allies, <laughs> and France has capitulated. The Thunder Dragon Empire now occupies France. Now, annoyingly, they have one tile on the Maginot, which they've got troops on, so I'm just gonna try and clean up the remnants of France as best as I can. And, uh, these are paratroopers, we're gonna send them over to the airport in Normandy, no hesitation. And the same with the transport planes, you guys are gonna go over to this airport here in Normandy. Now then, everybody else, just try and clean up any stragglers in French territory, and, um... From now on, we're going to be relatively careful and just put everything on four speed because I really do not want to f*** this up. I think what I'm going to do is uh, get our fodder and just, just camp on the Maginot because I really need my elite divisions, not here doing nothing in France, but across the channel doing the great Bhutanese sea lion. Speaking of sea lion, I'm just going to railroad all our best armies to the coastline. Uh... Come on, go, and then we're also just gonna get our paratroopers and start paradropping the UK. I'm gonna do on this tile first, just to see what the British have. Okay, they have absolutely nothing on our ports. Uh, this is brilliant. Right, immediately gonna drop on Portsmouth and in Dover, and also I'm just gonna drop in all the tiles around uh, the ports just to distract any British troops that might come and take out our paratroopers. Because let's face it, our paratroopers are in no fighting shape. So we're just going to drop on all of those tiles. Try and delay a British response if possible. Okay, right. Come on, troops. Rush to the English Channel. Hurry up. All right. Right, our divisions do seem to be here. And the British are there. All right, so... Let's immediately go ahead and draw a front line over here in the UK and come on, the Great Bhutanese crossing of the English Channel, come on, go, go, go. Now, the thing is with expeditionary forces is that if we take 
more than around 100,000 casualties, Italy will steal their divisions back. If they steal their divisions back whilst we are literally in the middle of fighting the uh, British, that is not good at all. If, <laughs> in fact, that's an understatement. That would be absolutely disastrous. So we just need to minimize our casualties as much as possible. Let's try and sneak back around here and maybe take London. The more of British troops we can encircle, the, least, the less fighting that we have to do, and the lower the chances that we are going to take major casualties. Hopefully, uh, we shouldn't take too many casualties, but we'll see. Come on, come on. Let's just sneak, try and sneak back around there and see if we can encircle London, hopefully, maybe. Uh, Alright, Germany has now declared war on Czechoslovakia, which means that they will get a little bit of war contribution, unfortunately. Uh, but it should be alright. We should still get most of the spoils of war here, um, because the Germans will have a hard time getting through the Sudeten force. So hopefully that stops them a little bit. Meanwhile, let's just try and micro our way to all the British victory points. Try and capitulate the British as soon as possible. The UK has capitulated. Amazing. <laughs> Bhutan has just taken down the Allies. Now, towards the end, Germany did declare war on Czechoslovakia for the Sudetenland, which means that they've got 6% war contribution. So do have a bit of war score. So uh, we have the majority of the war score. So I think we can still prevent the Germans from getting too much. What I'm going to do is just try and annex Czechoslovakia to begin with, because... It would be very, very nice to have those Sudet ports when we do go and fight the Germans. And after Czechoslovakia, I think our main priority is just going to be to puppet the Allies. So we can steal all of their factories. So I'm just going to puppet Metropolitan France and the UK. As for their African colonies, I think I'm going to annex them. Because they do have a little bit of compliance there already. So that's going to be quite useful. And also there is a lot of population, especially Western Africa that I desperately need. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And there we go. Bhutan got everything. Ethiopia was annexed, Czechoslovakia annexed, Malaya annexed, South Africa annexed, <laughs> the Bhutanese protector of Britain, Bhutanese France, Bhutanese Romania. Oh, <laughs> and Germany got absolutely sweet nothing. Right, from now on, we do have a lot of factories now. We have 112 factories. I think that's not even updated yet because we are going to get a bunch of our puppets and military factories. But manpower is still going to be a massive issue. So first of all, I'm going to use the British Raj as manpower. Now they do have quite a bit of available manpower at the moment. What I'm going to do is go into our templates here, go into our puppet templates and go on the Bhutanese Raj. And we're going to take over this infantry template. We're going to copy it over. Uh, I'm going to just take off the recon and the engineers because I don't have the infantry equipment. And I'm just going to train as many of these as humanly possible. Basically what happens is that this is using the British Raj as manpower. However, if I send the British Raj a bunch of convoys and then annex them, that manpower, it just suddenly just magically becomes Bhutanese manpower. And uh, we definitely need a lot of that. But right now is September of 38. I am looking to declare on the United States around 40, when 39 becomes 40. Hopefully take them out in like half a year, three quarters of a year, and by then Germany should have done Barbarossa, and then we can just make Germany fight a two-front war. Now, in the meantime, what I am going to do is justify on Belgium and also on the Netherlands. I want to ideally take out the Low Countries before Germany has a chance to get to them, just so that we'd have a little bit of a longer border with the Germans. 
All right, Spain is also justifying on us for Gibraltar. I mean, sure, I guess I will. I guess I'll just take Spain out as well. Why not? Also, I'm gonna just go down here and get those two extra research slots as soon as possible because we definitely need to catch up on research. We are very behind. There we go. British Raj has been annexed. And those uh, British Raj divisions we had, they are now completely made of Bhutanese manpower. Justification on Belgium is now completed. Uh, I'm literally just going to walk into their country. I don't think it should be that big of an issue. Let's go ahead, declare war, call the French in, and should be a bit of a walkover. Just walk straight into Brussels. There we go. Belgium is gone. Just annex everything, not forgetting the Congo. And boom, our empire grows ever larger. Next on the chopping block is the Netherlands. Alright, justification on the Netherlands is also finished. Just declare on them and set an aggressive battle order and go. There we go, Netherlands gone. Let's just annex the Netherlands and also... The Dutch East Indies might as well take their navy whilst we're here. Boom. There we go. Alright, Spain has declared war. And there we go, the Spanish has been defeated finally. Let's just take everything as well as their navy and boom. Our empire grows ever larger. We now pretty much have all of Africa. Right. It is time to ship all of those uh, these divisions over to the US later. Alright, let's declare war on the Americans. We should be alright, we do have some anti-air in our divisions, obviously. Need to remember to call the Canadians in and uh, just gonna micro our way to hopefully encircle these American troops in New England. And the United States has capitulated. Right, what I'm going to do is just pop it the US because they do have some manpower and we are in desperate need of it. There we go, the, the Bhutanese Protectorate of America. Uh, I've never seen something so anything so stupid. Right, the next thing on the chopping block is going to be Germany and they are kicking the Soviets in so we probably have to get involved pretty soon. The Soviets are getting completely destroyed, not going to lie. So, uh, yeah, definitely need to get involved rather soon. Also, let's see if the U.S. Oh, the U.S. has 4 million man. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> the U.S. has 4 million manpower. All right. I think our manpower problems are pretty much over. First, let's just request a bit of garrison support. The game was 2 million. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, America. And uh, I'm also going to go and copy one of their templates just to steal a bunch more of their manpower. All right, it is now April 41. The Soviets are completely screwed. I think it's probably time to start justifying on Germany. Now, before we go to war with Germany, I'm going to turn Transylvania to Romania, Bhutanese Romania, and I'm also going to go and release Czechoslovakia, whatever that is. There we go. Uh, just so that, um, yeah, just so that, Germany keeps troops on these borders, and that means they have less troops on our own border. Right, I'm going to also go ahead and just, just justify on Germany. It's going to take 30 days. 
we have our planes up, we should be able to push into Germany, and maybe the Soviets might do a bit of a counterattack, but I'm I'm skeptical. <laughs> Without further ado, go and declare on Germany. It's going to bring Japan in, but that's fine. I mean, the German border is just literally wide open. We have got an insane amount of cast up. But still, I don't really want to take that many casualties, so uh, I'm just going to try and micro a little bit. And hopefully just encircle them right here. Uh, should make our job a lot easier uh, later on. And the Axis surrenders, and we actually <laughs> we actually have the majority of the war score right then. What I'm gonna do is probably just try and annex as much land as possible. As soon as this peace deal is finished, I'm gonna just instantly start justifying on the Soviets because uh, it is 1941. It's not late, but uh, exactly, but you know we still want to get a you know a quick old war with the Soviets, and then we can move on to the Japanese, and then we got a bunch of tiny countries to clean up. And there we go, we got a pretty decent peace deal, we took up pretty much the majority of Germany, and the Soviets have a little chunk of the common turn down here, but it's detached from the rest of their territory. The Soviets, I think, are pretty damn weak, oh damn, they only have like a hundred divisions, right? Soviet Union, you are next on the chopping block, and I think what I might, is this Soviet, U oh this is just normal, oh this is Yugoslavia in the common turn. Alright, so the common turn is a bit down here. I'm going to send this army group on to this front, with the, the main front with the Soviets. There we go. And just do an aggressive battle order. And then we'll probably train up a few more divisions. Or we can use these UK divisions to clean up Bulgaria. Do Bulgaria have any? No, they don't even have any divisions. So, yeah, we can use these British divisions over here just to clean up uh, Yugoslavia and these uh, other common turn countries. Alright, it is time. Let's just go and justify on the Soviets. And I might try and get another collaboration government done on them, but that, uh, it depends. We have one collab right now. I really don't want to walk to the Urals. And this should be pretty easy because the Soviets are also fighting the Japanese, so they don't have very many divisions to spare at all. And just a vacation completer. Declare! And then we're gonna call the Czechs in and Let's go and call the Romanians in as well. Do we need to call anyone else in? I don't think so. Off we go. Off we go. That is the Soviet Union, dead and buried, defeated at the hands of Bhutan. Lag spike, and there it goes. <laughs> the Thunder Dragon 
empire, right? The issue is we are we are still at war with the Japanese, so um, I guess we're going to be swinging all our troops over here, and there is absolutely no supply. Oh my goodness! Uh, apparently, Mongolia is still in the common turn, and I think they're a major. Oh, it's Finland that's a ma Finland's a major. What kind of a joke is? Oh my. God, all right, sure. <laughs> Finland's a major. Whatever you say, Paradox. You guys are gonna take out the Finnish. All right, that's the Finns defeated, and we got a peace deal with the Soviets. Japan has a little bit of war score, but we have the vast majority of it. I'm just gonna take all the land because you know, annex everything. Hopefully, we have manpower to garrison all this, but I think we do. We should be all right. We have compliance with the Soviet Union. All right, that is uh, everything, and I don't think Japan got anything yet. We annexed everything. Right, we are still at war though, so oh, this is so annoying. Right, uh, as soon as this stupid Germany is done with this army here, is just going to be responsible for doing a little bit of cleanup. Lithuania, Estonia, you're all in the chopping block. Probably Turkey or Iraq as well. Going to go after Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, all those people. Just slowly knocking out countries in the background because I don't want to be here until like 1968 or something stupid. <laughs> And after a grueling campaign, that is Japan finally, finally defeated. Oh my goodness. That was so much pain. Anyway, no time to be lost because China, you are next on the chopping block. Everybody is on aggressive. Everybody is a go. Let's go. And declare. And communist China is dead. There we go. The Chinese faction all defeated. Obviously, just going to annex everything next on the chopping block is probably going to be italy boop and <laughs> our empire grows ever larger uh apparently turkey has declared war on me for <laughs> okay i guess that's a free turkey for us but that was a little bit unexpected i guess um it doesn't really matter. We can take them out. Right, let's just declare on Italy. It should not be that big of an issue because uh, they do have we do have insane amounts of air support, so there we go. The entire Italian north is encircled. I mean it's safe to say that Italy is pretty much defeated, but I'm not gonna capitulate them just yet, because even though Italy is literally a useless piece of trash, 
they still are counted as a major, and when you're at war with a major, you justify war goals a lot faster, which basically means if I keep Italy alive, I can just do a bunch of cleanup, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And I'll kill Italy at the end, along with all the other countries. Iran! And we also fight Switzerland at the same time. Go, go, go. Iran. Boop. Annexed. Finally, Switzerland is gone. There we go. Took a bunch of casualties from that as well. Saudi Arabia, declare war. Go. Afghanistan, go. Oman. Alright, Nepal, declare. Go. Yemen, declare. Ireland. Thailand, go. Sweden. Liberia, gone. Norway, Guatemala, and Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, next, Panama, go, Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, go, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Peru, Bolivia, go. Chile. All right, Argentina, Uruguay. Brazil, go, declare. And finally, the final country, Paraguay, declare war. The cast damage, everybody go, and this is the final chapter of our world conquest. Oh my god, this has been so long. In the making take that capital and then it will be Bhutanese victory boom finally <laughs> yes annex submit demands and oh my goodness what <laughs> what a glorious empire we can go into our playthrough overview 100 percent of the world conquered in 14 years and 4 months, yeah, I felt that 19 hours, oh my god. It is the 5th of May, 1950. The Thunder Dragon Empire encompasses the entire world. No other country exists. We went from a tiny, tiny mountainous country with only 500,000 population to a quite literal global empire. Once again, this video took an insane amount of time to make, not only the test runs and the fails and, you know, this run itself, it took 19 hours, like, oh boy, so it would be very, very much appreciated if you could drop a like and subscribe. If you enjoyed, do click the cards at the end of this video because there's a chance that you'll also enjoy those and stay tuned for future videos.